Hello and welcome to theCUBE's presentation of the AWS Industry Tech Partner Showcase. This is season one, episode one, kicking off a new series, covering the exciting partners from the AWS ecosystem to talk about accelerating media supply chain, volume and velocity with AWS. I'm your host, John Furrier. Today, I'm excited to be joined by Chris Blandy, Director, Global Media Entertainment Strategy and Business Development for AWS and Rowan de Pomeray, CTO of DPP. Gentlemen, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me. So we had a lot of conversations been going kicking out in the industry. So NAB just happened. That was a huge discussion around digital, the future of media, but the media supply chain was a conversation that was notable. People were talking about the supply chains are changing, there's different formats. Let's get into this, this keynote to unpack the current state of media supply chain and then look at the future. What are the key trends? And let's get into it. First, let's get a definition. What is the current state of the media supply chain? If I could take that one, um, we see a lot of customers have already moved their media supply chain operations into the cloud. Um, and we've got a rich set of partners who have enabled that. Uh, what they are looking for primarily is operational efficiency, a, a secure way to manage their archives. Uh, and increasingly, um, especially with all the mergers and acquisitions occurring in the business, uh, developing ways to integrate multiple disparate supply chains into more of a unified view of their media operations. Yeah, the move to the cloud has been phenomenal. At DPP, Rowan, what's your story? Tell us about what you guys do and how do you fit yeah. into the equation here with media supply chain? Yeah, so the, I mean, the DPP is a, a network of nearly 500 companies across the media technology space, media companies, technology partners, and and, and so on. Um, and actually, I mean, I'd, I'd really echo what, what Chris says, you know, we have our flagship event, the leaders briefing every year, we hear from 30 major media companies talking about their top strategic priorities. And if you look back over the last three or four years, there's there's been an incredible shift from a lot of talk about moving operations and supply chains to the cloud. Um, and, and as Chris says, I think you know many organizations are, are well along that path now. Um, you know, we went through obviously a, a particular set of different challenges during the pandemic where there was a lot about, about remote operation, there was a lot about workforce and, and managing people. And, and then coming out of that into you know a tough economic climate at the moment for many media organizations. Organizations, I think that operational efficiency piece is 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 really front of mind right now. You know, people are thinking about how they how they optimize, how they how they uh, do more with with what they've got, um, and, uh, and and really focus on on kind of maximizing ROI for their for their technology investment. I'd love to get your thoughts on what the, those leaders are thinking about when you have that those conversations, because you know, we were, Chris was pointing out the move to the cloud has been going on, certainly from a developer standpoint, but media, they act like developers too. They're developing content. Content is data. Um, data is has processes. Processes can be automated. Mm. There's a lot of undifferentiated heavy lifting. These are the talking points of AWS, Chris. I mean, every time I, I do an interview with, uh, with the folks at Amazon, that's what they talk about. Now you got AI. This is interesting as media workflows kind of get identified from an efficiency standpoint, you can take away some things, move that to the cloud or automate it. There's a transformation mindset. What is the top transformation conversations around these workflows? What are people thinking? They see digital, they see some scale, they see omni-channel, they see you know, all kinds mm. of new things that they have to get their arms around. Well, yeah, I, I, so I think the first, oh, the first wave was really you know, focused on ROI and operational efficiency and, and migration. Um, and then you know, after companies and customers started to get experience operating in the cloud, they realize it's it's more than just a uh, an ROI case or a TCO analysis. It's also a capability unlock. So, for example, we have solutions and partners that allow, allow customers to enrich their content metadata when they do the migration. So, we, you can use our core AI ML services to generate new metadata uh, by examining the content and extracting information like uh, actors or uh, products that are in the scenes. Um, leveraging speech to text to do transcription and and then also managing things like rights and avails and really building up um, a rich metadata um, library around the content, including integrating third party tools like our own IMDB service. Yeah, I think I think what I'd what I'd really add here is the the transformation word that you use there, John. Uh, I, I'm actually almost seeing fall out of favor a little bit. I think you know right now 
Um, there's there's been you know we've been in a constant state of flux for for many years, constant state of transformation. Um, that's probably not going to go away. Uh, but actually, we're seeing a lot of a lot of media companies really trying to focus on very specific, tangible use cases, things they can make better. Um, and you know sometimes that's faster, sometimes that's more cost effective, whatever it, whatever it happens to be. And and I mean you know as Chris says, there there are new opportunities, new use cases being unlocked. And and what's quite exciting now is I think we're seeing some of the technologies that we've been talking about for a number of years move sort of beyond the stage of of hype into like real tangible application for media businesses. So some of these ML tools is a, a good example of that. You know, three or four years ago, the trade shows, it felt like everybody was trying to sell you the same basic AI solutions, and they mostly weren't living up to, to the quality bars that people wanted. Whereas now, you know, I'm having very, very tangible conversations with media companies about where they can automate aspects of their supply chain, aspects of localization or packaging and delivery or, or whatever using using some of those tools. I mean, it's almost a perfect storm of innovation opportunity. We've got multimodal AI, as it's called. It's not just text with a large language model, it's computer vision, it's audio, it's data, I mean, this is, media is data, and this is where I like that conversation you just mentioned, the AI is cool, but automating workflows is one, event-driven supply chain, for instance, is a conversation that's been having, manual work being automated. We talk about the event-driven supply chain, because automation seems to be the first wave, people go for that right away, but what does that actually mean? Is it actually in practice? Can you guys share uh, the event-driven supply chain uh, discussion? Sure, I think, you know, as Rowan mentioned, there was an initial wave of transformation. It was really about moving uh, to the cloud, migrating your operation, and then automating workflow and moving towards more of a managed by exception model. So you have more operational efficiency with your with your operations teams. But now I think, you know, given all the tools like uh, AWS Lambda, uh, you can start to monitor the workflow and trigger actions dynamically based on a state change in the environment. So when a new piece of content shows up, you can automate inspection of that content and understand what processes do I need to perform on that without human intervention. So this type of automation is sort of the next wave. Um, and you know, that's going to drive that efficiency conversation. You know, a lot of customers now are facing economic headwinds as we are all, all are, and they're looking for ways to consolidate the operations and to drive more efficiency. So leveraging these, this next wave of automation and event driven, uh, supply chains is really the next step. I'm also really bullish on generative AI. I know it's in the buzz a lot. You mentioned large language models and things like that, but if you think about, you know, what Rowan mentioned about localization, for example, think about the potential to leverage some of the visual gen AI tools to automate things like subtitling, dubbing, um, and even driving lip sync matching to the, the, the dubbed version so that the end result is more realistic the audience is more engaged because it feels like the actor's speaking in their native tongue. We're seeing startups doing that now, built on AWS uh, and really starting to gain some traction. So I see this as um, a future uh, unlock that's going to really drive even more efficiency in, in the uh, distribution side of the business. Ro, and this is back to you. You brought it up earlier, AI, machine learning, big part of it. What's the hot areas? I mean, obviously data, video, it's video, video, all data, it's metadata. A lot of things to work with here. What's your, what, what's your view mm. on this? What's happening? Yeah, I mean, there's there's been a lot, and and localization is a great example here. I mean, we we just did a big piece of research in this area, and there was a, a very palpable feeling that we are at a bit of an, an apex for for the use of machine learning in in that space. Uh, you know, a huge amount of excitement right now about um, voice like uh, machine learning voice models, so voice cloning um, and uh, synthetic voices that can be used to to enhance a human performance uh, or make it sound like somebody else. I think that's somewhere that we're seeing uh, a lot of rapid progress right now. I think what Chris said about things like, uh, you know, using generative to, to, um, to manage lip sync and that kind of thing could, could be very, very exciting. Um, but actually, I think one of the things that's exciting about sort of some of what, what Chris was touching on there with the event driven as well is there's a bit of a mix, right, of, of maybe, you know, systems that might be relatively simple rules-based automation, you know, using some event-driven workflows to apply some fairly, uh, you know, well-defined rules that can be incredibly powerful for automating things. And then you start to mix in some of the more sort of creative, generative machine learning aspects. We've got a real mix of technologies that are coming together to make, uh, you know, much more of a difference than, than any one individual would, would make. 
You know, this is, uh, I think, one of the most exciting years. I think it's, uh, it's not really kind of recognized yet in the industry. I think if you're inside the ropes, you see media, media entertainment as certainly a very nerdy, very tech, cloud scale, data driven AI mm -hmm. opportunity unlocking as, as Chris, you were saying. But you know, media is changing so much. This is a big opportunity. I think programming, data, how you guys are looking at it, we're going to bring change the game significantly. And 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 I'd love to get your guys' thoughts on what happens next as the industry changes uh, and continues to evolve. It's very DevOps-like. It's very DevSecOps. You can you're going to have to have containers. <laughs> you got Lambda. I mean, you got AI. So yeah, a business that's been, I won't say manual, but they've had technologies been there around. But now it's going to be some change. What is the pace of change that you guys see coming uh, in this industry? Because this is going to be disruptive. I mean, the things you guys are saying is just mind blowing. For sure. Well, I, I think that there's been a lot of work put in to to um, to enable that agility, right? So we've been seeing, seeing media companies looking for more modular technology solutions for a long time, looking to integrate best of breed components from from different partners. And you know whether you're doing that in an event driven way or whatever architecture you're using, actually almost doesn't doesn't matter. I think the fact of the matter is that what's best of breed today may not be in in two or three years time. And so people have been I think starting to starting to really leverage the cloud to to give them that flexibility to be able to to adapt the workflows, the automations, the tools they're using uh, over a period of time. Um, I, I'd be interested to know if if you're seeing that in, in in amongst your customers, Chris. Yeah, I think you know there's two trends that are emerging now that I'm that I think will have a huge impact on the future. One is customers are starting to see this media supply chain operation not as a, a cost center. But it's also increasing, uh, increasingly seen as uh, potentially impacting revenue. So if you think about it, um, if you can automate your media supply chain for distribution, you can increase your time to market and time to revenue dramatically um, by having a cloud-based archive, being able to automate your distribution processes. And so we see customers who, you know, in the past may have taken weeks or months to move uh, a set of assets to a distribution partner are now doing that in a matter of hours or days, uh, including entire libraries of content. So this type of agility and speed in, on the distribution side of the business, which is a big part of the revenue uh, that any time customers um, uh, earn, is important. I also see uh, new business models emerging that are enabled by automated media supply chains. So Fast Channels is a great example where customers have moved their archives into the cloud They've mined more metadata, and now they're able to automate the process of standing up fast channels and experimenting with what's working with customers very quickly, iterating very quickly, and, and then shifting um, on the dime, as you will, to adapt to customer and audience demand. And fast, and fast, finally, channels, I, fast channels for people who don't know what it is, it's the large aggregators, right, the, uh, on over the top. Is that is that what you're referring to? Just make sure. Yeah, free ad supported television. You know, it's been a business model for a very long time. But now it's available in a much more personalized way. There are um, deep archives of content that have not been syndicated for a long time that are now emerging. Uh, and we're seeing media entertainment customers really starting to drive more revenue out of that archive than ever before. This One other thing that I see is really heating up is sustainability. And a lot of the partners you're going to hear from have adopted sustainability goals themselves and are enabling customers, especially in Europe, we're seeing this trend very importantly emerging, but it's starting to um, spread out globally. But by moving your media operation into the cloud, especially all the work we're doing at AWS to get to 100% uh, renewable energy by 2025 for all of our data centers, you can dramatically reduce the carbon footprint of your operation. So we're seeing a lot of demand from customers to move to a more sustainable model. Many of the largest media companies have uh, stated net carbon zero or sustainable goals as part of our main corporate mandate. So moving this type of operation to AWS can really accelerate that goal. That's awesome. Mm. And, and the Gen AI stuff's too great. Rowan, you have a, uh, your take on it? Yeah, I mean, if, if I can respond to both of those, actually. I mean, on, on the fast point, a huge amount of buzz recently. Um, if one looks at the, the the hype cycle around a piece like this, I feel like we're in that almost in that trough of disillusionment at the moment. In that you know people have have really dived into fast, and I think what Chris has said there about experimentation and iteration is really the key, right? The, getting the data out of it and responding to that. 
uh, we had this great quote in a research piece we did recently where uh, a media exec said, uh, if Fast generated as much revenue as it does conversation, we'd all be in a very good place. Um, <laughs> but the fact of the matter is that those who are getting it right are generating good revenue out of it. So what you've got to be able to do is experiment, learn, shut down the things that aren't working and, and, and you know, really dive in on the things that are working. And that's what an agile media supply chain enables you to do, right? So some, some of those experiments won't work, but some of them will. Um, and, and that's why you want that agility. Um, and, and I would just really underscore the, the sustainability point as well. Um, you know, this is a big area for the DPP. We we have our own sustainability assessment program committed to sustainability. It's available to everybody in the industry for free. Um, and, uh, and if you don't know about it, I'd really encourage you to look it up. But, uh, but, you know, that's really about helping people to make those steps towards a more sustainable business. So, you know, we're, we're very much aligned with uh, with what Chris is thinking there. I think it's a really, really important topic in the industry now. I love that sustainability piece. It made me think of something else I wanted to bring up since, you, since you're here. Um, local content. Um, sustainability is on one hand is you know, carbon footprint. Local journalism, local media seems to be an issue. Lowcast was a company I saw out there got, got shut down. They were like a free, uh, you know, they had some property right, they had some content issues. Local content, fast channels, is local a hot issue or uh, are we getting there? What's your thoughts on that piece? Rowan, on what's going on with local conversations? Because you meant local localization. Yeah. I, I mean, I, uh, local is an interesting term, isn't it? Because it, it, it depends on the granularity at which you look. You know, we, we recently had a, a major event with European broadcasters and many of them are national broadcasters, right? They they have a really strong news focus. They really care deeply about, about the commitment to the audiences in the countries they're working in. Um, and, and so that's, you know, certainly in Europe, a, a huge focus. Um, it, it sort of runs deep in the DNA of many of the broadcasters there. Um, you know, you go into a much larger market like, like the US and obviously, you're, you know, you're down into much more of that kind of traditional local community kind of uh, content. I, I do think this is hugely important. I think sometimes uh, we're still feeling our way to, to getting the economics right of doing that in a streaming world, but the potential is is actually to to have you know more flexibility than we've had in a you know an affiliate broadcast network model where uh, you know what the definition of local might be rather dependent on where the transmitters are placed or, or where the cable head ends are. Situ um, situational, so, yeah. I mean, it's, Chris, yeah. this brings up the the benefits of an Amazon Web Services. You you look at the API kind of architecture of cloud. You got integration, you can work with anyone. This unification of the supply chains potentially could be how companies partner. How do you guys see people integrating together? I mean, I could see an, a market where you have a platform set of tools and then content applications and content providers working with each other, uh, whether it's common platform or through APIs, this unification becomes a big deal. What's, uh, well, how important is that? And how does that play into what could be innovative, whether it's local sustainability or other opportunities? Yeah, so just to touch on the local piece real quick, we, we see um, a lot of interest in local content scaling globally. So for example, um, we've been working with customers who built out an OTT platform in one country, and now they're making that available globally through the use of AWS as a cloud, a global cloud platform, reaching audience all over the world who's interested in that content. So this is opening up new opportunities for these local content producers to distribute their product. Awesome. In terms of unification, as I mentioned earlier, we've seen tremendous change in the industry. Lots of mergers and acquisitions over the last several years. These companies have inherited a lot of technical debt and a lot of disparate workflows. Yeah. And trying to integrate those workforce, uh, workflows, especially across a global workforce, is really challenging. But by migrating to the cloud, you can take that great leap forward and at, at a minimum get observability over everything and then start to figure out how to strategically unify the things that are important to drive more efficiency. Yeah, I think your so point about un, I think your point about ROI efficiency and then unlocking new opportunities is a real key key focus there. Final question, the last couple of minutes we have for you guys is, you know, and when you have these opportunities where you have platforms and tools like AWS merging, you're going to see moving to the cloud, okay. I think there's going to be a other, other unlocking of new ventures and new brands that could emerge. What's what's out there that you might see or people might not see that they should know about that's emerging, that's new, that's uh, that's on a new brand that's taking advantage of the tools. There's always new new players that emerge when there's new capabilities that are different. They refactor, they build, they get in the market, they use cloud. What are you guys seeing as new things that people might not be seeing right now? 
Well, I'll 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 jump in and and say uh, I mean you know as a as a neutral industry group I'm not going to mention names because we we can't uh, we can't uh, align too close with anybody in particular but but what I will say is that we see regularly now um, you know small startup companies um, you know technology startups that can come from all over the world who suddenly can get in front of huge media companies or huge companies in any sector because of the fact that we have these software-defined supply chains running in the cloud. Um, you know, if, if you can be in a marketplace of, of, of AWS or, um, you know, just, just out there and available to run on a cloud platform and integrate with, you know, other tools from more established vendors, we see some really interesting small companies coming through that that just wouldn't have been possible in the hardware world. You know, the, 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 the barrier to entry is much lower now. So especially in some of these AI areas, I would be keeping my mind wide open for that kind of stuff. Yeah, I would add that, you know, this category, media supply chain, was practically invented by startups building on AWS. And, you know, while the concept of a media operation obviously existed before, the, the vision around moving it to the cloud and then both driving that efficiency and also driving that capability unlock for future um, use cases was really driven by that startup community. And, and then the more established players sort of were followers in that space. So I think you see a lot of startups leading mm -hmm. and gaining ground and then the market moves. We're seeing that as well with generative AI. You know, startups built on AWS like Runway uh, have now won Oscars for the work they did uh, in visual effects using generative AI tools. So um, I, I am very bullish on the startup ecosystem and the best way to start a business is in the cloud. Yeah, we are too, Chris. Great point. I think AI is going to be a big game changer. Supply chain, velocity, volume, the ability to merchandise that content with tools and, and supply chain capabilities and that's like AI, it's going to be an opportunity to, to change content game. So uh, you guys are the head of it. I think it's going to be a massive change. Congratulations. Thank you for joining us today on the program. Chris Blandy, Director of Global m and &E Strategy and Business Development and Ron Damon Parent, CTO of TPP. Thanks for joining us for this kickoff of the AWS Ecosystems talk and showcase about accelerating media supply chain volume and velocity. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Okay, I'm John Furrier, your host. Thanks for watching.